Welcome to New Line 99, a channel about the TI-99 4A home computer. This episode is about the graphics architecture and capability of the TI. Everything that displays on the screen is a result of the TI's processor sending commands to the Video Display Processor, or VDP. On the TI-99 4A, that's the TMS-9918, which is a custom video chip with its own video RAM. The VDP has several modes and controls available. The TI uses the ASCII character set. Any of the characters from 0 to 255 can be displayed, but only characters 32 through 126, the printable ASCII characters, are useful for regular display. Each character occupies an 8x8 square of pixels, and the pixels are either on or off. The definition of each character takes 8 bytes which can be represented by a string of 16 hexadecimal digits. This is mainly important because in TI Basic, the user is permitted to modify the appearance of any character between 32 and 159. So if you're writing a game and want to have graphics in it, you can use call char to redefine what a particular character looks like. The first parameter is the ASCII decimal value, and the second is the new character definition in the form of a string of hexadecimal digits. Each of the 16 hex digits will modify a group of four pixels, starting from the top left, across and down, to the bottom right. Since characters 127 through 159 don't already have ASCII printable characters in them, they can be used to store new graphics. The other characters can be overwritten too, but you have to make sure that you don't need them to spell a word or display a score. When TI Extended Basic came along, they took away the ability to redefine characters 144 through 159 to have resources for new features, so there's less space to make custom graphics characters without affecting existing printable characters. Extended Basic gave us a lot of new features, so that's okay, right? Well, one of the problems with that is now you don't have backwards compatibility. There'll be basic programs that don't work with Extended Basic, as well as Extended Basic ones that don't work with Basic. A lot of users choose to overwrite the lowercase character range, 96 through 127, and if they have to display text, they stick to the capital letters. The built-in lowercase letters don't look all that nice anyway. A whole character set can be replaced with a nicer version of the characters using call char. The screen supports 32 characters across by 24 down. That's a decent play area for games, but it becomes a little more problematic when you're typing whole sentences out and the text starts wrapping around. Remember that word wrapping is not handled automatically in systems back then. You can plot characters anywhere on the screen by calling HCHAR or VCHAR, which allow you to repeat the characters a number of times horizontally or vertically. For example, if you wanted to draw a box, you could use call CHAR to define the six characters used to make the box, use HCHAR to draw the horizontal parts, VCHAR to draw the vertical parts, and you're done. The TI has a 40 column text mode, making it 40 by 24. It's not accessible from basic or extended basic, but some cartridges use it, like the editor assembler cartridge and word processing software like MiniWriter. The system has a fixed color table containing 15 colors. You've got black, medium green, light green, dark blue, light blue, dark red, cyan, medium red, light red, dark yellow, light yellow, dark green, magenta, gray, and white. By today's standards, that's pretty skimpy, but that's what we had and we liked it. Some computers at the time, like the Timex Sinclair, were only monochrome, so in comparison, 15 colors was pretty vibrant and attractive. There was also one color that represented transparent. The system had a transparent color to be able to display an external video source through the VDP and overlay titling or graphics from the computer. This was not a feature that was fully built into the TI. My understanding is that you can actually modify the system to receive video input and process it like this. From assembly language, you can actually turn on the external video enable flag in VDP. And without a synced external signal connected to it, the screen gets all scrambly trying to display nothing. Turn the flag off again, and then the screen goes back to normal. That piece is not very useful, and most of us never use the transparent color except to make something invisible against a background. Each group of eight characters can be assigned its own foreground and background color. The color for characters 32 through 39 is the first group, 40 through 47 was the second, and so on. This meant that you only had 16 foreground background color pairs that you could use on the screen at one time. And it goes down to 14 if you're using extended basic. So if you wanted to make a very colorful program, you had to be pretty efficient and use a lot of tricks. 
One big benefit to using the extended basic cartridge was the ability to use sprites. Sprites are characters that can be superimposed over any position of the screen, even ones that don't line up directly with the 32 by 24 character grid. Call Sprite is used to command this new plane of screen objects. Indicate the sprite number, 1 through 28, the ASCII value of the character to display, the color, yes, only one color, the horizontal and vertical pixel position, and optionally the horizontal and vertical velocities, and you've got a sprite on the screen. One single line of code and you're displaying a sprite is that easy. The sprites even support automatic motion handled by processor interrupts, so they're able to animate even while you're executing other extended basic lines of code. How does this animation through interrupts work? An interrupt is an automatic signal that executes a series of instructions that are considered high priority. If you've ever played the TI game Car Wars, you may have noticed that when you wreck your car into the other car, it creates this epic crash with debris flying. If you hold down function quit while the debris is flying, you halt the system, but you'll still see the VDP interrupt continue to function as it moves the debris pieces in a straight line from their last assignment. Call motion is used to alter the movement of an already created sprite, taking in the sprite number and a new horizontal vertical velocity. Call COINC, short for coincidence, is used to pull if two sprites are in a state of collision. Give your sprite numbers, the amount of distance tolerance to consider collision, and a variable. And it'll store the current collision state in the variable, minus one for collision or zero for no collision. Call color can be used to change the color of a sprite. Call magnify allows the user to change the size of the sprites. The user can make the sprites normal 8x8, double-sized 8x8, normal 16x16, or double-sized 16x16. Call del sprite will remove an existing sprite. Like many systems in the 1980s that supported sprites, this system too can only handle displaying a maximum number of sprites in a single scan line, four in the case of TI. So the four sprites of the lowest order will be displayed, and any others on that line will be sacrificed. What about multicolor sprites? There are some TI games that appear to use multicolor sprites, but that can only be accomplished by layering multiple sprites of different colors. And that gets a little dicey when you start filling the screen with those especially when they're on the same horizontal line. There's also a mode called bitmap mode, not accessible from basic or extended basic. In this mode, the whole 32 by 24 character grid is replaced by a 256 by 192 pixel plane. Each and every pixel on the screen can contain an on or off pixel value, and every block of eight pixels across can contain its own foreground and background color. This is a mode you won't see used too often, but some art programs on the TI support it. I have a cartridge called Super Sketch that uses it. In general, the TI is quite slow traversing this unique graphics terrain, because every action in this mode requires copying pixel data over to the VDP. This mode is quite fun to play with in assembly language, but if you plan to incorporate full screen graphics into your TI software using bitmap mode, you might start thinking twice about it when you realize one 256 by 192 image takes up 12K of your precious memory and huge chunks of time copying it from disk. Also built into the TI is a rare and mysterious mode called multicolor mode. In this mode, the screen is made up of 64 by 48 pixels and each pixel can be any of the 16 colors. This mode is a unicorn. I have never actually seen it used in anything. I had to write an assembly language program just so I could see what it looks like. That's all we're doing today. Many of the example programs created in this video are available at the link in the description box. See you next time from New Line 99.